Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Heavenly Father. The day you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about you, Lord God. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Heavenly Father, not just to understand your word, Lord God, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 The title of today's lesson is, Who the Son Sets Free is Free Indeed. Who the Son Sets Free is Free Indeed. Because we understand that when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and then when they sinned, we realized that sin came upon the whole entire world. So therefore, the whole world is subject to the law of sin and death because we've all sinned. So therefore, God had to send Jesus so that he can redeem us and restore us from the law of sin and death so that we can get back in right standing with the Father. And that's what we're going to learn through today's lesson. So without Jesus, like I said, you will not be free from the law of sin and death. But with Jesus, believing in him and keeping his commandments, then like I said, you, you'll know, um, you can have access back to the tree of life. And we're going to um, um, break that down now. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, we're going to read 1 through 24. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 4. 1 through 24. When you get there, go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, right. lest you die. So we see that the fruit, the, the fruit, they said the trees of the garden, like it says, so we had the, um, hold on. No, no, keep, keep reading, keep reading, keep, go, ahead, go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Right, so we know that she didn't literally eat. Cause, you know, some people believe that she ate an apple. No. It clearly tells you, it says, and um, no, he says that when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat. Now, we also know that, like I said, there's, there's no food that you can actually eat to become wise. You gain wisdom from either hearing or reading or listening, you know, or listening or reading. So, like I said, so she was listening to the um, knowledge of the tree of evil, and that was Satan right there. Like I said, so, but she was supposed to continue to keep, because I know when, um, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, it says, And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden, in the garden he to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou shalt thou may freely eat, but do not eat of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt eat of it, for in that day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. And see, so that's why man is dying right now, because if we sinned against our God. But go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Mm -hmm. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Right, so instead of taking accountability of his own acts, he tried to throw her, his wife, under the bus. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> and the Lord God said unto the woman, Was it this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Or deceived me. Mm -hmm. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Right, so we understand that the man is the one that carries the seed. But see, it says, and I will put enmity between thee 
and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. This woman's seed right here is dealing with Christ. You know what I'm saying? He said in this, that's what it says in it. Shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise thy heel. Real quick, you can put this in your notes. In uh, Romans, I think it's 16 and 20. Romans 16 and 20 where Paul talks about this. Romans 16 verse 20. Where it says, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Because he, when, when Christ died on the cross, that's when he defeated death. He defeated death because when Satan um, made Adam and Eve eat from the knowledge, well, eat, eat, eat from, uh, well, listen to his conversation, that's when the whole entire world was under sin. You know, something like that. But see, that's why he had a sin of redeemer, which was Christ. And he, who was that woman seed so that he could... Uh, put us back in right standing of the Father. And it said, that's when Paul just quoted that in Romans 16, 20. But go ahead. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto thy voice, unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Right. So, like I said, so you see that we came from the dirt, and the dirt we're going to return. Like I said, but our spirit, our breath of life, that goes back to the Father, which you can read in Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. But go ahead. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam also to his wife did the Lord God made coats of skin and clothed them. Mm -hmm. So we see that. And so instead of God having to kill Adam and Eve right then and there, because, you know, without the um, the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. If you remember, they put earlier, they put uh, coats of, um, yeah, 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 exactly. So now you see that right here. He says, and then right here, right, make coats of skin and clothe them. So he had to kill something. He killed an animal. They like said in, the in their shit. The Praise the God. Bed. Exactly Lord, right. Lord. Exactly. Lord, mission of sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. 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 So now let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 5. Oh, so go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I mean, every time I read this passage and stuff, I think about the stuff Adam and Eve walk around naked and mm -hmm. they never felt any shame. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and after, they, after they conversated with their enemy, mm -hmm. with the devil and stuff, mm -hmm. Then Adam, he makes the, you know, he, he, he conversates back with God and said, he said, he said, I hid myself because I'm naked. Yeah, exactly. And God already knew it. He told you he was naked. He said, well, who told, who told me you were naked? There you go. That's how you know. It's he's, almost like he said, where did you get this term from? There right. you go. No, amen. Hey, you know, so exactly. what you know about being naked? Amen. Hey, there you go. Amen. Exactly. It's always amazed me when yeah. I heard you did. Mm-hmm. Amen. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Romans 5, 1-21. When you get there, go ahead. Romans chapter 5, 1-21. Go ahead. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom also we have access by faith unto, his, unto this grace, wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Mm -hmm. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Mm -hmm. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Right. 
For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Right, so we see that, like I said, cause a lot of folks, that's why, you know, when Jesus mm -hmm. says that, uh, what good he says, for, for a man to lay down his life for his brother, mm -hmm. like he says, so he says, for righteously, he says, for scarcely a righteous man will die, will, will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But Christ, he came and died for all of us. We were all ungodly because we were all under the law of sin and death. But he still died for us. So go ahead. But God commended his love toward us. Mm -hmm. While we were what? And that while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Exactly. Much more than being now justified by his blood. So, we're not, so we know we're not justified by keeping the law. That doesn't justify us. Why? Because we've already broken the law. So we're justified by his blood or by his grace. Go ahead. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Mm -hmm. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Mm -hmm. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Mm. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Right, reconciliation. Go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Right. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So you got to remember, Paul reminded, you know, saying that for thousands of years, the law had not been explicitly given, and people were still dying because of the what? The sin of Adam. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that, because you know that... um because it, it was pretty much oral, you know what I'm saying, pretty much all the way up until Moses. And then when he came into Moses, that's when he put it on tables of stone. Right. But we realized, you know, because, you know, that Abraham knew the law, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, because Joseph knew the law. They all knew, you know, the law because you can read that in the scriptures. However, like I said, but it wasn't given on tables of stone until 430 years after. That's when Moses so came. So after the sin of Adam and Eve and stuff, there are actually two forms of death, the physical death and the spiritual death. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, well, it was both. You're right. So, yeah, so Jesus came and redeemed us from the spiritual death from because spirit. we all were going to yeah, die. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, well, Amen. Amen. But I was just thinking no, no. while they were in the garden and stuff, uh, they yeah. were supposed to live forever. Oh, yeah. yes. Right. Because remember, they were talking, yeah. as, long as, they, as long as they took hold of the tree of life, which was Jesus, mm -hmm. they were still, they were able to yeah, live exactly. forever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Go ahead. Who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of many be dead, mm -hmm. much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Right. So like I said, so that just lets you know that um that like I said, for, for by grace are you saved, not by works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because it was a, it's a free gift. So none of us like I said, so none of us could have done anything to earn this or merited favor or salvation. Amen. Go ahead. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Mm -hmm. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Mm -hmm. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, mm -hmm. much more they which, which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. Right. As long as that's right. As long as, that's, as long as you believe in Christ and keep his commandments, then you can, you can get that eternal life. But go ahead. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Mm -hmm. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Right. Moreover, the law entered that the offense may, might abound. Mm -hmm. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Mm -hmm. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So now it's going to go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52 because we got to see where... Um, where Jesus atoned for our sins right here. we got to see what, what he had to do to atone for our sins. Isaiah 52, we're going to read 13 through 15. Isaiah 52. 
13 through 15. Go ahead. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. Mm -hmm. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Mm. As many were astonished at thee. Um, his visage. That was his face or appearance. Was so marred mm -hmm. more than any man. And his form more than the sons of men. So when I ask a lot of people, you know, the Old Testament ones, who was this talking about? Well, that's talking about Israel. When Israel, when Israel used to, when going through captivity, when they would get beaten. I'm like, oh, what? Christ. That's Christ. Because it says he, yeah. his. This is plural. Yeah. I mean, this is singular, not plural. Not talking about the name. This is clearly talking about one person. Exactly. Because well, we just watched the um, Passion of Christ again mm -hmm. just the other day. I mean, he was, man, like the stuff that he went through on the movie. And like I said, it's probably even worse in real life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went through it, man. But he got you buy this stuff that, that they had clips and stuff with the phone. It, well, yeah, and then it was pulling and then it was taken off. The, the, oh, it was hard, man. Yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. But he did it for his love for us, though. But go ahead. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. Mm -hmm. For that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Okay, next chapter, Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Next chapter, Isaiah 53, 1-12. Go ahead. Who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor common. Right, because remember, so when they saw him, he was no form of beautiful, because like I said, when he, when he was come preaching, he didn't want them to be captivated at his looks. You know, so they want to make sure that they that, that they heard his words, not not how he looked. But go ahead. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Mm -hmm. He is despised and rejected of men, mm. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Because he said in mm -hmm. um, Romans, I would jank. Uh, John 1 and 10, he said, I came into my own, but my own received me not. Mm -hmm. Like I said, because he was coming to die for the sins of Israel, but like I said, a lot of people rejected him. But go ahead. A lot of our people rejected him. Go ahead. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Mm -hmm. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right. See, so the Lord, so we see the Father, he said he laid the, uh, on him the iniquity of us all because people try to tell you, can't nobody die for your sins. Right. Can't no other man die for your sins. But that's why Christ, God sent, God sent Jesus so that he can die for our sins because he was a perfect sacrifice. And he was able to atone all of our sins because there was no sin in him. Verse 7. He was oppressed mm -hmm. and he was afflicted, mm -hmm. yet he opened not his mouth. Mm -hmm. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened, openeth not his mouth. Mm -hmm. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his gen generation? Mm -hmm. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Right, because he died. Go ahead for what? For the transgression of my people. Was he stricken, mm -hmm. and he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Because remember, he took that tomb, that rich man's tomb. Mm -hmm. So that was right there. So he said, "They made the rich in his death." Go mm -hmm. ahead. Because he had done no violence, mm -hmm. neither was any deceit in his mouth. But what? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, mm. he shall see. His seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Mm -hmm. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Mm. See, so we're justified by not by the law, but by who? By Jesus. It mm -hmm. tells you right here that we're justified by him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For he shall bear their iniquities. Yep. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Mm -hmm. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, mm -hmm. and he was numbered 
with the transgressors. And when they said that he was numbered with the transgressors, remember he was on the cross. Mm -hmm. the there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he bare the sin of many mm. and made intercession for the transgressors. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Exactly. So now let's go ahead and go to Daniel 9. Daniel chapter 9. Read 20 through 27. So we're going to read another thing. Like I said, so that's what, that's what God was telling, uh, showing Isaiah in that vision. So now I'll God's going to show Daniel the same thing about the Messiah. Daniel 9. We're going to read 20 through 27. Daniel 9. We're going to read 20 through 27. As a matter of fact, start at verse 15. Start at verse 15. Oh, okay, I want to show the sins. Start at verse 15. Go ahead. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, mm -hmm. we have sinned, mm -hmm. we have done wickedly, right. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness. See, that's why we need a Redeemer and a Savior, because we've done wickedly and we sinned against our God. But go ahead. I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem. Thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach or to all that are about us. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, O oh, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate. For the Lord's sake, oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolation and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercy. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. Oh my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Mm -hmm. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen, in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications and commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art gently beloved. Mm -hmm. well, you good. I'm go sorry, ahead. greatly, yeah. greatly. Mm -hmm. Beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Now you're about to break down because he realized when you read the first part of Daniel chapter 9, he knew that they were going to be in captivity for 70 years. So now he's going to break down and be like, okay, it's going to go from 70 years to 70 weeks. And we're going to break that down right here. Go ahead. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city mm -hmm. to, to do finish what? the transgression mm -hmm. and to make an end of sin. To make an end of sins, go ahead. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Right, to make reconciliation to for iniquity, go ahead. And to bring in everlasting righteousness yes. and to seal up the vision and prophecy. And to do what? And to anoint the most holy. Which is Christ, go ahead now, here we go, go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks mm -hmm. and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, mm -hmm. but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So we see that right here. So it says... He says right here, it says, Now therefore understand that the that from going forth to the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince shall, he says, there'll be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. 
He said, and then he said, the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times, and after three score and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off. Because you got to remember, this is 490 weeks. Mm -hmm. So 490 weeks, he says, and after three score and two weeks, 483 weeks, remember, Christ only preached for three and a half years. So that leaves us at 486 and a half weeks. That's what you're going to see, but not from himself. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war, desolation will determine. I just read the end of 26. So when it talks about the people of the prince, that's talking about Rome. Rome came in and destroyed the city and the sanctuary, the temple, in 70 AD. And the end shall be with a flood, which is the army, and the end of the wars of desolation are determined. And then verse 27 says, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. When you look, a week is seven years. He said, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifice and oblations to cease. So we see that Jesus preached for three and a half years in his ministry out of the seven years, but then also Jesus died in the midst of the week, which was Wednesday. He never died on Good Friday and rose early Sunday morning because you can't get three days and three nights from Friday evening to Saturday morning. So clearly, when Daniel saw this, when he got cut off in the midst of the week, he died Wednesday. So when you look at Wednesday evening, so Wednesday evening and Thursday evening, that's one day. Thursday evening and Friday uh uh, evening, that's two days, Friday evening and Saturday evening, which is the end of the Sabbath, boom, that's three days and three nights, and that's when Jesus rose, he rose at the end of the Sabbath, right before right before Sunday, the first day was established, but that's, that's a whole other lesson right there, but the point is, is that Jesus, right here, this, this whole prophecy right here is pertaining of the Messiah, but what he had to do, the Messiah had to make an end of sins, he had to make reconciliation for iniquity, he had to bring an everlasting righteousness, he had to seal the vision of prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. But go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. There are churches that teach those a seven year. Right, so they yeah. get the seven year right here in verse 27. Mm -hmm. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week to seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifice and oblations to cease. For the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Because remember, after, after 70 AD, Israel became desolate. It became because why? We were kicked out of the land. Mm -hmm. And who came and occupied our land? Other nations, Other the Byzantine nations. Israel, the Ottoman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Romans, and now right now the Edomites are in the land. Mm -hmm. But you see that right here, they get the seven, the seven year tribulation right here, and they say the the, the Antichrist is going to make a covenant of peace for seven years, and then in the middle of the seven years, that's when it's not, it's not going to be a covenant of peace, and that's when it's going to be hell for three years, and that's when God's going to rapture up the church and bring it to heaven, and then why for three and a half years the whole entire world is going to go through hell and chaos, which we know. None of that is biblical. They can't. That's not sound doctrine at all, though, at all. But that's what that's what when you get the movie like um, Left Behind with Kirk Cameron and all that. That's what they're basing the, the doctrine off of. But it's it's not biblical at all, though, because there is no rapture at all. Because remember, the Bible said that the the righteous will be in the wilderness during the time of the great tribulation, not rapture. And that's going to be a three and a half. Years. Yes, it's only three and a half years. Never seven, exactly. Never seven and a half year tribulation. Yeah, you only see forty two months times times a half a times. 1,260 uh, days. All and the first years. seven and a half, is that when Jesus, you said Jesus, I think, preached from 30 to 33 and a, yes. third and a half? Yes, he did, yes. And he's going to come and conclude the other. Right, so that's why he conclude the last three, three and, and a half years. years. Right, so, yeah. right. so that's, when, seven. that's when you go to Ezekiel chapter 20 and you read 33 through 40, and that's when he's going to, um, when he brings us to the wilderness, that's when he's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant, and that's when he'll fulfill his week. His oh, other, Ezekiel, what, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 20, 33 through uh, 40. And then that's when, right, and then that's when we'll, um, we'll, we'll all come into the covenant. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. That was Ezekiel. What? Ezekiel 20, 33 through 40. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I said, when, when he brings it to the wilderness, and that's when he has to finish up. That's when he'll finish up the 490-year uh, the prophecy. Because you know it's, it's three and a half years still left in that prophecy. He has to fi uh, finish that. Right. So 490 that, weeks, you're talking about. Huh? The 40, what I say? What? Years. I think 490 weeks. Yeah, the, yeah, the four, yeah but it's no, no it's, still, it's, it's, still it's, years. it's still years, oh. though. It's 490 years. Well, remember, is considered seven years. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know, yeah. Well, right, so that's. Seven years. Yeah, yeah. So, though, so when you see, right, so when you see verse 24, mm -hmm. 70 weeks are determined. Those 70 weeks are 490 mm -hmm. years. Okay. Right? Okay, I, I had 490 weeks equal 490 years. Cause right, because remember, a week, cause remember a week is. One week equals seven years. Right, one, one week equals seven years. Okay, so it still equals seven Yeah, 490 years. years. So right now we're years. 486 and a half years in. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has to come back for those other three and a half years 
to consummate and fill up to 490 weeks mm -hmm. of the vision. Because like what you said, he died in the midst of the yes. week, in that three and a half year uh, uh, ministry that he had. Mm -hmm. He's going to come and conclude that. There you go. Of, we remain in three and a half years. Exactly weeks. right. Because so, you see right here wow. in verse 25, know that therefore and understand that from going forth to the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to the Messiah shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's 483 years. Mm -hmm. So out of 403, 483 years, then you go to verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant for many for one week, but in the midst of the week he shall call sacrifice and oblations to cease. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's there you go. So yeah, 483 and 7. 43 four plus 7 gives it 490. There you go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that right there's a real, you know, like, you know, I, I, done, I, I did a lesson on, that's a real meaty topic because it's a lot of, Stuff going it's on with broken it. down well though the way yeah. that, I mean how do you break mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. But you know, I did a whole lesson understanding seven weeks. There's a lot more to it, you know what I'm saying, right. than this we just going over right here because you know we we substantiated through uh, going through the scriptures and all mm -hmm. that. But yeah, but that's 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 not what the lesson's about today. So now let's go ahead and go. So we see that the Messiah had to come. So now we're gonna see when he when he comes to the scene. Let's go to Matthew one. This one the Messiah comes on the scene. Matthew one. We gotta read eighteen to twenty five, because he was born so that he could take away the sins. Not just Israel, but also the sins of the world, though. Matthew 1, we're going to read 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 25. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So it says that before they even came together, before they even had... Uh, consummated their marriage, she was already pregnant. But you got people still think that Joseph is still the father. By How can the they father. not see this? It's, it's amazing. Says, this is scripture where it says before they even yeah, came they still say she was found with the child. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And look at it says right here. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man, a righteous man, and not willing to make her a public examine, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for which is conceived in her of the, is of the Holy Ghost. So you want to let her know, look, don't think that she was out here tiptoeing on you, cheating on you. Mm -hmm. She's being conceived of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, behold, this is... This is in um, Isaiah seven fourteen. Behold, a virgin shall shall be. He said, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and his. And, his, and called his name Jesus. So he said he knew her not. So even when she was pregnant, he wasn't even laying with her. Right. No. Exactly. exactly. And but they still say, camps are still talking about, but, no, see that seed, that was Joseph's seed. That was Joseph's seed. And, like, and, if, and if, it was, if it was Joseph's seed, he was a sinful man. So that we would not be, we would not thank be you. able to come we, to Christ because God said he's not going to look upon any sinful man. Amen, flesh. right. Because remember, and also, like I said, he, he came from that seed of Kaniah. Remember, his seed, could not sit upon the throne of David nor prosper. Mm -hmm. So if he came through that lineage, God knew exactly what he was doing. Exactly. That's why when you read Matthew 1, that's the genealogy of David, I mean of, um, of Joseph on Solomon's side through David. When you go to Luke chapter 3, mm -hmm. you see the genealogy of Mary through Nathan's side through David's son. Through because David. she still had to be from the seed or the, or the, or of, of Judah. You know, so she had to come from Judah because people believe that she was a Levite. I'm like, she wasn't a Levite. No, she was from Judah. Judah. Exactly. Right, because Christ was what tribe? He was a Judah as well. Oh, both from Judah. Yeah, they're both from Judah. Because yeah, because you remember um in Numbers 36. In Numbers 30 in Numbers 36. God wants you to marry out of your own tribe. There you go. It says right here, it says, it says Numbers 26. Yeah, so Numbers 26 saying verse 7. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel be moved from one tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his father. And every daughter that possesses inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be the wife unto the family of the tribe of her father. And that the children of Israel may not, that, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his father. Neither shall the inheritance be moved from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of his tribe of the children of Israel 
shall keep himself to his own inheritance. So see? So they all had to marry through his tribe. And we also know that the inheritance came through Mary because Mary's father didn't have any sons. It was daughters. So that's why the inheritance went through her. Because she didn't have any sons. Because you know, if you don't have any sons, it goes to the daughter. daughter. And that's what we're reading. So that's so that's why her father, Eli, Eli, didn't have any sons. Mm -hmm. So that's why the inheritance came through her. So that's why she was that woman's seed that was spoken about in Genesis chapter mm -hmm. three, verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now let's go ahead and go to John. Let's go to John chapter eight now. John chapter eight. We're going to read twelve through forty-two. Because see now, John. Let's see now. Christ is going to talk to the Pharisees to let them know that he is the one. That was, that, was, that was spoken of that was supposed to come die for the sins of Israel. They didn't believe him, though. So we're going to read it right here. John 8, we're going to read 12 through 42. John chapter 8, we're going to read 12 through 42. Can we get there? Go ahead. He has spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Mm. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge my judgment, yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but mm -hmm. I am the Father that sent me. Mm -hmm. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Exactly. So, right. So, because we got to say before a fact of matter can be established, it has to have two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. so, he is, so, he's telling his witnesses. He said, didn't it say in your law? So, he understood how it was in, uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 19.15. You know what I'm saying? Letting you know that. Two or three have to establish a matter of fact. So mm -hmm. he that says it's him and the father. Is that this is how this, this is how the scripture said it should, it should be? But go mm -hmm. ahead. So, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the father that sent me beareth beareth witness of me. Mm -hmm. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. Mm -hmm. If ye had known me. You should have known my father also. Mm. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. So you know they wanted to lay hands on yeah, him then, but it wasn't his hour yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah it like wasn't quite. Right. Amen, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me. Ye shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. You're making it clear to them. Like, listen, That's right. You don't see, me. right? Because if they would have read Daniel nine, they would have read Isaiah fifty three. They should have known that he was the one to come. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But obviously, they didn't have any understanding of the word because they were teaching traditions of men. They were teaching from the Talmud instead of the Bible. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak of the world, those things which I have heard of him. Mm -hmm. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lift, I'm sorry, when ye have lift up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, mm -hmm. and that I do nothing of myself but as ye but as, but as my, I'm sorry mm -hmm. but yeah. as my father have taught me mm -hmm. I speak these things because you got a lot of folks who think that Jesus came and, and, and preached his own doctrine and, and he came something see he because see people believe the Pharisees were law keepers and that Jesus came to let them know you don't have to worry about keeping the law anymore you can just believe on me and that's totally false and contrary because he let them know everything that the father told him 
He got I mean, Jesus didn't come bringing his own doctrine. But people believe that, though no, he can't speak it on his own accord. No, everything that he spoke was what the Father told him to say. So he couldn't he couldn't go contrary to the law that was written in uh, from Genesis to Malachi because he had to fulfill that. So therefore, so, and that's what he actually taught. Because when you look, it says, "For I've not come," he said, "For I've not come to destroy the law and prosper. I came uh, not to destroy, but to fulfill." When you read that word "fulfill" in the Greek, it means "plerahu," which means to fully live or to fully preach out. And that's what he did. He lived it so that we can be. So that he, um, so that we can follow in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. That's what it was because no one was living it right. So he was the one to show, okay, this is how it's supposed. To, this is how it's supposed to be. And so he's supposed to be our example. And he was spoken of from, from of course. Genesis to yes, he was. To, 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 yeah, that was him. And yeah. That was him. And exactly. That's why he was saying, you said you say that you know my father, but you don't even know him. Yeah, you don't. Because said, if you would, it said, if you if you knew him. You know who I am. Exactly. Because exactly. Scripture speaks of me. Yeah. He says, search the scriptures. And then you see, yeah, right. Because he says in, um, he says in, uh, what was that? Uh, John 5, 30, John 5, 39 says, search the scriptures for them you think that you have eternal life. And they, he says, and they are they that which testify of me. Because the scriptures testify of Christ. Testify. Right. Exactly. Right. Amen. Right. But go ahead. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my, my disciples indeed, mm -hmm. and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? See, they don't really understand the bondage that Christ was speaking of. See, they're looking at, and of course, they, and if they really had some understanding, they were in bondage because they were still ostracized of the Romans at this time. Because when we look at it, if they'd have known anything about the history, they'd have known all throughout history, Israel was always in bondage and, and under subject to other nations, mm -hmm. especially, especially the Southern Kingdom right here under Babylon under uh, the Medes and the Persians, under the Greeks, and now under the Romans. But anyway, Christ was talking about more of a spiritual bondage, seeing that you are in bondage because of the law of sin and death. Yeah. So, since you, so since we've all sinned, Christ came, he had to be the one to redeem us. That's what, he, that's what, they were, that's what Christ was talking about, but they had, they had zero understanding. Now watch this, go ahead. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the servant abideth not, in the house forever, mm -hmm. but the Son abideth forever. And if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. That's where I got the title of the lesson. We'll go ahead. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Mm -hmm. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Ab I'm sorry, with your father. Mm -hmm. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Mm. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Man. But now ye seek to kill me, mm -hmm. a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Mm -hmm. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me, for I preached forth, proceeded, I'm sorry, forth. proceeded mm -hmm. forth, and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil. Right, because they, they will always want to keep saying, you know, we have one God, the Father, we Abraham see now. You're your father, the devil. Well, go ahead, why is that? And the lust of your father ye will do. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. And how was he a murderer from the beginning? Because remember when he, uh, he caused Adam and Eve to stumble, mm -hmm. and therefore death came. So that's how he became right. a murderer from the beginning. Mm -hmm. well, go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Mm hmm when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. 
which of which of you convinces me of sin? Mm -hmm. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why they can't hear it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now let's go ahead and go now to um, Romans 3. Romans 3, we're going to read 9 through 31. Romans chapter 3, we're going to read 9 through 31. We're going to show how all people are sinners. Sister Beth, you know what that, what you just, what they had just read, this is going to be some of those same people who are going to be sitting up there and saying, but Lord, didn't we preach in your yeah, name? You know that. And they going to say, I never knew you. Right. Of workers of iniquity. Worker to, workers of iniquity. Exactly. Yeah. Workers of iniquity. Exactly. Because a saying. lot of them in their own mind, they think that they, they got it together. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot, like I said, a lot, like I said, because, you know, I'm in this group called, uh, the law versus the gospel. There's a lot of Old Testament brothers in there, man. I'm talking about they, they, they can't stand Jesus, boy. And I'm like, man, y'all, I said, man, man, they, they make fun, call him Earth Pig, call him Zeus, all wow. kind of stuff. You know, so I said, okay, y'all doing this now? Because remember, the Bible says for every idle word that you speak, mm -hmm. we'll be held to And you gonna, when Judgment Day comes, you got to hold accountable for those words that you were saying. And they be talking evil against they call Christ. They themselves Israelites too. Yeah, there is, like, but they, they don't believe in the New Testament though. They only believe in the Old. All in the Old Testament. That's it. You oh. cats probably stuck in the Talmud, too, probably. Well, no, well, they say they don't. I mean, they just say, the, but when you show them all kind of, I mean, because Christ is all through the Old Testament, even from right. Genesis, like said, so you show them who this, and you should hear the answers that they say. Like, one guy said, Isaiah 53, we just read, yep. he said I was talking about Hezekiah. What? Hezekiah? Hezekiah. Oh. I said, how can Hezekiah? I said, Hezekiah? I said, man, what are y'all talking, man? I'm telling you, people are lost, man. But, you know, that that, that scripture where it says, it says, says you know, some men they love darkness more than they love the light. Yeah. Some people are just like like being in darkness. They're mm -hmm. just gonna believe what they they're just gonna believe. They'd rather believe a lie than the truth. That's it. Exactly. No, that's it. That's exactly yeah. exactly it. Romans three, nine through thirty one. Go ahead. What then? Are we better than they? No. And no wise. And he's talking about as far as Israelites being better than Gentiles. That's what he's talking about. Because when you read in verse 1, it says, What advantage did have the Jew, or what profit there is of circumcision? But every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Yes, I understand that, but we're all still at sinners, though. So he's trying to say, don't That's think, right. don't look at yourself as an Israelite. Get up on your high horse thinking that you better than Gentile because look, we're all sinners. Oh, amen. There right. you go. So that's Gentile. There you go. All yes, exactly. Yes. So no matter what nation, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. So don't boast and think because you got a lot of. You remember, you got a lot of Israelites walking there. They had their head puffed up. You know, we Israel, we Israel. Mm -hmm. So that's what Paul was trying to let them know. Right. Look, don't be puffed up about because, that. I mean, I know I bring it up no, all yeah, the time, yeah. but that's like when Peter when he met Cornelius. There you go. It was an unlawful thing. There, no, there you go. Excellent. Well, Excellent. You know, Excellent. Mm -hmm. Because it was it was a form of high mindedness. That's exactly what it was. With, with, with Jews back then that Good point. Right. Good they, point. They were above. Above. Yeah, Amen. Good point. Excellent. Excellent point. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles mm -hmm. that they are all under sin. Right. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Right. Yeah, there is right. none that um, understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Mm -hmm. They are all gone out of the way. They are all, I'm sorry, they are together become unprofitable. Mm -hmm. There is none that doeth good. Mm -hmm. No, not one. Amen. Go ahead. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Like a tomb. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. With their tongue, they have used deceit. Yep. The poison of ads. A snake or a snake. cobra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is under their lips. Mm-hmm. Whose mouth is full of cursing, and whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness? Mm -hmm. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Mm -hmm. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known? Mm -hmm. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mm -hmm. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is said to them. Who are under the law. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about the Gentile. I mean the, the Israelites. Because they were so boasting in pride. So he says now we know that the thing. He says now we know that. What things soever the law saith. It said to them who are under the law. These are the ones. These are the Judaizers who didn't believe in Christ. So they felt that they had to be justified by the law. But look at this though. That every mouth may be stopped. And what? And all the world may become guilty before God. Right. Because what? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, mm -hmm. there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, 
whereby the law is the knowledge of sin. Right, so that's why none of us can be justified by the law because what the whole entire world is broken the law. So therefore, when so, so when people try to tell you, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. And that's true. We need to be up under grace because he said the whole entire world is guilty of the law. So we all need a savior, which is Christ. So this is what he's going to tell you. Watch this, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, mm -hmm. being witnessed by the law and the prophets, mm. even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, mm -hmm. being justified freely by his grace. Not the law, but by his grace or his blood. Mm -hmm. Through the redemption that is in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. whom God hath set forth. To be a propitiation through faith. A sacrifice of atonement. Go in ahead. his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that, that are past. That are past. Mm -hmm. Because people want to say that, you know, because I know, like, I saw one person. When that one thing uh, we saw on that post, you said that Jesus died for your past sins, your present sins, your future sins, so you can just live like how you want. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Ooh. Yeah, I'm like, well, oh, it's like, no, it's, but he said he died for our past sins because now that when, when, when we die in Christ, we ask for forgiveness and when we come up to the baptism, we're supposed to be a new creature in Christ. Now, granted, mm -hmm. will we, yes, will we still sin after that? Yes, sure. but we're no longer a slave to sin now. That's right. It's a different between being someone a slave to sin and a person who commits sin. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different, right? Because he, but then we also have an advocate of the Father to whereas, you know, we can ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins as well. But like I said, but we're not walking in sins. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to we're trying to be righteous before the Lord. But we are gonna end up falling from time to time. That's what the Bible says a good man falls seven, seven times, times but gets back up, but when the wicked fall, they fall into mischief. Mister, that's where God delivered me and stuff from always condemning myself. Amen. Where, where, where it said there's therefore in Romans, you know, Romans there's no yeah, condemnation, no condemnation Amen. to those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because I thought about what Paul said. That's what freed me up and stuff. He said, "Old oh, wretched." There man, you go. I am. There you go. And he said that now he will walk with the Lord, a powerful man. Yes, he was. Walking. He said, Praise God. "When I will to do good, good. He, he was, was present." Oh, right. there you go. So it's a warfare. There you that's go. The, Lord delivered the flesh and spirit. Praise God. You don't have to constantly be fighting. He says, constantly. "Put on Ephesians six. Put on the full armor Amen. of God." Amen. So Amen. when the wiles of the devil come against Amen. you, you can, you can, you can, you know, you can overcome by the Word of God. And there you go by the Word of God. Exactly. Praise God. You're right. Exactly. Amen. Um, where are we at? Verse 26. 26. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is boasting then? Mm -hmm. It is excluded. By what law? A work? Nay, but by the law of faith. Mm -hmm. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See, so now, see, so when he says this, though, this is, when, this is why they're going to ask this question. He said, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, watch what he's going to say. Go ahead. Is he the God of the Jews only? Mm -hmm. He is not. He is. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Right. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is one God mm -hmm. which shall justify the circumcision by faith. He said, so seeing that there's one God that shall justify the circumcision, which means the Israelites, mm -hmm. by faith. And who else? And uncircumcision through faith. Which was Gentiles. Oh, or Gentiles. Yes, Gentiles. now watch this. So now, because the reason why he's going to ask this question, because of verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So then, look, that's why he asked this question, verse 31. Go ahead. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Mm. Yea, we establish the law. See, yea, we still establish the law because he now righteousness comes through Christ now. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you still have to have faith in Jesus Christ, but then you still have to believe in him. And when he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, that's right. you have Amen. to be obedient to him. Right. So that's why it says, do we did make void the law through faith. So therefore, all we got to do is just believe. We ain't got to worry about keeping the law. He says, God forbid. No. He says, yeah, we established the law through our faith in Christ. And that's just like what you said. You said that, that that's just like what you said. That, Go ahead. That's just like you said, that woman had on that post and stuff to say that because Jesus forgave all your past sins yeah. and stuff, so you can live in any way that you want. Exactly. Past, present, and future. Past, present, and future and yeah. stuff. And that's what a lot of people really say. Well, that's why they're so quick to say, well, hey, man, you know, I know it's wrong, but God know my heart. There you go. I'm under grace, I'm under grace. You know, that's what they'll use that. that. <laughs> right. He said, so they're under grace. He said, can you sin? They were like, God forbid. Yeah, you know, of course yeah. not. You still can't sin just because you're up under his grace? Of course not. Not willfully. Yeah, right. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Not willfully. 
Now let's go to Romans 6 and read 15 through 23. Romans 6, we're going to read 15 through 23. When you get there, go. go ahead. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His, let's see, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, mm -hmm. whether of sin unto death mm -hmm. or of obedience unto, um, oh, I'm sorry, unto righteousness. See, obedience. Obedience means that means you have to do what? Obey unto righteousness. What is righteousness? Like it says, is when, um, it was when we're keeping his commandments. But we're having our faith in Christ first, though. That's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. not, not because, you know, we're keeping the law. Of course not. Because, like I said, you can keep the law all you want. We've already sinned. So now you need atonement of that sin which is Christ's blood. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Mm -hmm. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto I'm sorry, iniquity unto iniquity. Mm -hmm. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Mm -hmm. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Mm -hmm. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Remember, they didn't produce any fruit. How can you produce fruit if you're walking in sin? You can only produce fruit when you're walking in the spirit. And like I said, that's where you can get that in um, Galatians 5. Because when they were walking in sin, they were walking in shame. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Go ahead. For the end of those things is death. Yeah, exactly. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness mm -hmm. and the end everlasting life. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So now let's go ahead and go to uh, Romans 8. Romans 8, 1 to 17. Romans chapter 8. This is what you just quoted earlier. Oh. Amen. Romans 8, 1 to 17. Go ahead. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Right. So see, so by so for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. And what is the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death is when you broke the law. As soon as you broke the law, therefore, that's that's the law of sin and death. So what we're supposed to go into the lake of fire because the uh, the lake of fire is the second death. However, if you're up under Jesus, you don't have to worry about going to the lake of fire. Or have to worry about being up under the law of sin and death. Go ahead. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, mm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you understand, so we have a carnal mind or a fleshly mind, that means that you're not keeping the commandments of God. When we have the when you're walking in the spirit, then that means that you are keeping the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, verse seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, mm -hmm. for it is not subject to the law of God, exactly. neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if um, if so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Mm -hmm. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, mm -hmm. but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. 
But if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Mm. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. See, so says, for we have, so says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Because remember, that bondage is being under the law of sin and death. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, where we cry, Abba, Father. And so now, um, we, we, we can become adopted into the God family. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, because you can get a better understanding in Ephesians chapter 1. So we have, we have to be adopted into the God family. Because, you know, spirit beings can't procreate and create sons of gods. So that's why we have to be adopted into that family. But go ahead. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. Amen. Read uh, 31 to 38. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us? all things. Mm -hmm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that con condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Mm -hmm. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted, or we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Go ahead. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 That's why when we go through our trials and tribulations, this is a powerful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. You told me. Yeah, you wrote. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Uh, Claudine. Yeah, Claudine. That's what Claudine yeah. said. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man, she I sent mean, you these two? Yeah, she sent me, she sent me Romans 33 through 39. Oh, okay. Because it was up there talking about the stuff. I mean, and that's what Lily had, you know, relayed to me and stuff. She said that as believers, we got to know that Christ do love us. Amen. Yes. Because sometimes yes, when you does. go through your trials, yeah. you know, we ask the question, hey, the polls, you know, like, Lord, are you there? Yes, yes, yes. Do you, do you that's why it says, "Behold, I'll, I'll be with you even to the end of the age." Yeah, like he's, age. yeah, I love this type of this age like, to come. Like so, he's like, you know, I'm always be there for you. Like you said, you gotta just love him. And that's why I know God is true, man. Because yes. when I was a little boy, and and I was questioning and talking to the Lord, and that's the thing and stuff. The Lord spoke to my heart and told mm -hmm. me He called me by name. Praise Steve, God. I love you, son. Amen. And said to know that I'm with you always, mm -hmm. even until the end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. That's there a little boy broke yes. down, man. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. She was never thinking. Yeah. 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 He speaks to you. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. it's the spirit. Yeah, that's what it's spirit. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Last one. 1 Corinthians 15, 42 and 58. First Corinthians 15, 42 through 58. Last one. Go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Mm -hmm. It is sown in a natural body. Mm -hmm. It is raised a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, 
and afterward that which is spiritual. Mm -hmm. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now he's going to tell you right here. So he's going to show us how we can bear the image of the heavenly when we put on our spiritual bodies. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Right. See, this is why, like I said, because when you, when you read John 3 and 3, John 3 and 3, like I said, when he says that right here, John 3 and 3 says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Remember, when you're born again, that means that you put on your spiritual body. However, it's a two-part process. Because see, now we're going to the first part right now by being born again, but by having the renewing of our mind, which need, which is which need, that's why the Bible says in Philippians two five, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. But we will not be fully born again until we put on our spiritual body. But we have to start it right now in our mind first, in the spirit first, and then when we end up dying, or if we don't die after coming to the Lord, then we put on our spiritual body. That's when we will be born again because he tells you. Now this, I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now we're going to tell you what's going to happen and why we have to be, uh, and why we can't have on this flesh and blood so we can see the kingdom of God. Go ahead, verse 51. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. Mm -hmm. We shall not all sleep, mm -hmm. but we shall all be changed mm -hmm. in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, mm -hmm. for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, mm -hmm. and this mortal must put on immortality. Right, exactly. So that's why. So we have to put on our, our spiritual body now. So now, now we'll, we'll be just like Christ with that body that we have on. And that's when we're born again. But go ahead, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, mm -hmm. and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is that is written, death is swallowed up. Victory. Mm -hmm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, mm -hmm. and the strength of sin is the law. Exactly right. So it tells you so he says, death is what? Well, he quoted Isaiah 25 and 8. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? He said, the sting of death is sin, right? But then he says, but then the strength of sin is the law. Because when you're keeping the law, then you can live. But the only way, to, but when you're keeping the law, you got to believe in Jesus in order to live. Because the law by itself cannot bring life. Mm -hmm. You have to have Jesus, though. Go ahead. But that's why it says right here. Go ahead. But thanks be to God, mm -hmm. which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hold on real quick. This last one. Go to Revelation 22. Because I want to show you because cause remember God took away the tree of life from us and put flaming swords around it. But now we're going to see when we have access back to the tree of life. Go to Revelation 22 and read 10 through 14. And that's it. Revelation 22, 10 through 14. Go ahead. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecies of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Mm -hmm. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Mm -hmm. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Amen. Okay. Amen. So right. So now the like I said, Jerusalem. there you New go. Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. The Praise new God. Jerusalem. So we see that, like I said, so Jesus had to come and redeem us from the fall of man because 
we were all up under the law of sin and death. That's why who the Son sets free is free indeed. He freed us from the law of sin and death so that we can have back access to the tree of life and be with the Father. And that's like what you had read earlier and stuff. That's when he was talking about putting on, in, uh, take com putting off corruption. Yes. I mean, incorruption. And no, yeah, yeah, corruption yeah, yeah, put up, they're taking and, off corruption and, 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 and putting on incorruption. And corruption. Yeah. Mortality and putting on mortality. Immortality, praise God. Immortality. That's what Christ and stuff that said the same Jesus who died and stuff and that was raised. His, his, he spirit. Will come and his, his spirit will quicken, quicken you. I, praise I, I God. There you go. Exactly. The exactly. That's why it says that it will, will be heirs, will be joint heirs to Christ, and will be heirs it's to the to, God. To God. Exactly. That's the promise. That's the promise. There oh, you that's go. That's something there. The heirs, but to be yes. joint heirs to Christ. There you go. To be joint heirs of Christ. When you say joint, that's equal. Yeah, I mean, it is. Be together. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So, we will be called uh, like brethren. Yes. Brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but joint heirs. You be like good. Too. Yeah. So hope yeah. you got some understanding. Jesus name. Amen. Good job, man. Awesome. Praise God. Well, Stephanie did some reading today.